Hey guys, welcome back to a chilly, cold day here in New Hampshire. It is uh, 50 something degrees outside and inside the shop. It's a nice rainy fall day. Got the puppies in here, Ray Handsome. And uh, we are working on a brand new mold. It's brand new to the, uh, to the Kydex world. It's brand new in my shop. And uh, we're gonna see how well it is. Now, um, if you aren't familiar, I use a lot of multi-molds, full molds, which is right here. Listen, Handsome, I'm trying to do something. And uh, I have a lot of them, somewhere upwards of uh, about 350 full molds behind me. And uh, as you know, in a lot of videos, I do pale horse vac molds, but multi-molds wanted to change the game a little bit. And this is a pretty exciting mold. It is called the new Epic Mold Series from Multi-Molds. You can find it on their website for a slew of different models. This particular one is for a Glock 19 with a uh, either a J-clip or a tuckable clip or dual bell clips. Sorry, the dual rubber loops or the foamy, which is the reason why I ordered this particular one. Now, um, you have a mold and trim jig in one. You have definition like this without vacuum. So let me show you everything and let me show you what this is all about. First things first, let's see the new mold. This is the Glock 19. It is a two-piece epic mold. And as you can see, you have the pocket or the negative side, and then you have the positive side with the um, all the details that you need. Now, this is how we use this. Awesome part is, with this particular setup, you don't need to use a 12 by 12 or anything ridiculous size like that and waste a lot of material on, you know, when you're vacuum forming because you got to create the seal. This only has to be big enough to just fit within the HDPE mold itself. Now, uh, so I uh, we're going to use an 8 inch by 8 inch piece. I don't have it cut now, but I do have an 8 inch wide by 16 that we're gonna cut. And as you can see, not a lot of wasted material, which is absolutely awesome. And eventually this mold pays for itself. So on that note, um, again, you have your negative and you have your positive. What you need to be careful with is when you make the holster, your outside, make sure it doesn't go on the positive. The outside, uh, the shiny part goes on the positive and the outside is going to be attached to the negative. Keep that in mind because it can get kind of confusing. It confused me at first, but just remember that's what you need to do. We're going to throw it in our heat press uh, for 395 degrees at 160 seconds. And that's what I normally do for vacuum forming. The uh, Kydex comes out at around 370 to 380, depending on the thickness of the Kydex. And we're just going to go ahead and place it on this and then throw this on top. Make sure we're lined up and then throw it in the press. And this is what it looks like. Cool. It's big enough. All right. Line it up where it needs to go. That looks good right there. And then in the press it goes. And we'll just compress it. It. So I actually did a full cycle with uh, uh, 160 seconds at 395, and uh, so this is the second piece. First one didn't come out too well, but um, so this is what it looks like. And the good thing about this is you can actually rock an 8x8 piece of Kydex instead of wasting, you know, a 12x12 12 12 on normal vacuum form stuff. Uh, so I'll take the top off, and that's what it looks like right there. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to trim around this. I'm going to do it on the scroll saw. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and hit it on the um, the router, and uh, we'll fold it and see how it looks. And this one, um, I have a gun show this weekend, so I'm going to bring it to the gun show and, uh, and whatnot. But if it doesn't sell, maybe I'll give it away. We'll see, because we're at almost 10,800 subscribers, which means we have a giveaway coming, so it's probably going to be a holster. But anyways, let's get this cut, and let's get it on the router table.
let's take a peek of what it looks like now. There it is right there. Not too bad, actually. Definitely looks good. I'm going to go ahead and I'll buff it real quick and uh, go from there. Obviously, you got to drill the holes too, so yeah. Cool. All right, so I'm going to drill everything out, then I'm going to buff it. And we can do that too. They're a little close together, but don't know until we do it, right? It's a brand new mold. Oh, that's perfect. All right, go hit it on the buffer and see what happens. All right, we did the little buff. Now we're gonna fold. This is a Gen 5 um, blue gun. So we're gonna fold. This is a uh, this is a 5.7 that I did last night on a brand new vac mold. And as you can see, the difference in vac and compression, you get that really tight, it almost looks injection molded. And this is, this is nice. That is, I'm not used to it. That is, <laughs> that's pretty. But I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to fold it, and uh, we'll throw some hardware in it and see how the retention is. Now right, we're going to throw some hardware in this. And like I said, generally, um, with vacuum forming and all that stuff, it is quarter inch retention. So I'm just going to see what it's like with the quarter inch retention, and we're going to go from there. I have a feeling it would be fine. And generally what I do, I put it so the screw is flush with the end and the vac form. A little tight because of that particular setup. Not the mold at all, it's just me. There you go. Which means I would use a longer screw. Oh yeah. That's nice. So let's throw some of these on. And like I said, I did this one to do um, the rubber snaps, but I, I made it wide enough to accept a foamy. All right, and there we go. Uh, well, you know, obviously short of doing uh, some laser markings on it, but you got this. Now, me personally... I'm not a fan of all the curves and whatnot. I really like, um, you know, straight. I, I just, I like the look of straight, but this still is very nice. Um, as you see, if the dex gets too hot, you got marks from the mold in it. No big deal. Nice and smooth, though. But that is very nice. You can see it's an uh, open bottom end. That way, if you have any comps or threaded barrels, you don't have to worry about that. So, all in all, not too shabby. And, of course... This is the first time doing that, so that's that's pretty nice. And obviously, this right here is for um, other things. I don't know if I have a nope, not on the other side. Uh, so this is for a RCS um, J hook or anything like that, an overclip that if you want to install on that as well. Not too bad, not too bad at all. All in all, this Epic mold is actually pretty impressive. So. Um, Honestly, it took a little bit to get used to because, you know, I had to dial in temps and times. But it looks like just the normal amount of time on the heat press combined with, honestly, I had it in the press for about two minutes and then I took it out. So, um, a lot faster than letting it um, cool down with foam. 
and I would say just about the same time as blowing it off with air with the vac. So it actually wasn't too bad at all. Here it is right here, as you can see with the light gleaming off of it. That looks very good. And honestly, it feels good too. They definitely did an amazing job designing it. So again, here is what it looks like. You got your positive, you got your negative. They sandwiched together and good to go. One thing that you need to keep in mind is that there's no play. You have to get it good, um, which is why they have alignment pins. So you can actually work that into a press that you have. Um, so all in all, pretty damn good and not too, uh, not too shabby. So there are many ways to skin a cat and this is just another way to make an IWB and <laughs> that, <re> <laughs> I was going to say that retention, that definition though is out of this world. It looks good. Tony and the guys at Multimolds and everyone that he collaborated with did an absolute phenomenal job with designing these molds. So definitely recommended. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys joining me on the journey of discovering new methods and using new molds and of course what they make and how new things to the market is always a good thing. So now it's a little afternoon, going to get myself some grub, feed the dogs, and I am going to be back building more. Luckily so far this morning I've done about five orders out the door, which is awesome, and I still got a long time to go. On top of dealing with a chainsaw issue that I have. And it's a pain in the butt. I'm going to have to rebuild the motor, but it is what it is. But anyways, I will catch you guys on the next one. And a huge shout out to Holster Smith and Knife Kits and Multimolds.com. Like I said, Multimolds for this and all the material is from HolsterSmith.com, including the glue gun. You can get all the material you need there. And of course, as you can see, all the molds that are hanging on my wall, 99% of them are Multimolds. And uh, I wouldn't be where I am at without the help of all those guys in the industry. So a huge thank you to, you, to those guys. And I will see you guys on the next one.